Hello, and welcome to the seventh in a series of films about the organic uh, topic from the standard level course. Here we're going to look at the reactions of alkenes. Having looked at the reactions of alkanes, we're now going to look at the alkenes. It's good to know that these are actually a little bit simpler than the alkanes, and we're going to try and write equations to represent the reactions of alkenes with um, four different things. They are hydrogen, halogens, hydrogen halides, and water. No mechanisms here, you'll be pleased to hear. Right, alkenes in general, why are they reactive? Well, because they've got this double bond. So there's a hell of a lot of electron density here, right? And as soon as that double bond breaks, then we've got spare space for other things to attach to. So things that like electrons will come and attack. Electrons can make bonds. This double bond can break, but leaving these two carbons attached, and then we've got spare bonds to attach to. Okay, so that's why alkenes are going to react with things. And if we can think about what's going on there, and the fact that every time a double bond breaks, those two atoms that were double bonded are going to be the things that attach to the new things, it's going to make our lives a lot simpler. Okay, now reactions with hydrogen, these are an important commercial process because it you might have heard of hydrogenation. This happens in particular with fats. Okay, we can change the properties of fats by hydrogenating the double bonds in them. Okay, now you can imagine that if you took hydrogen and broke open this double bond, then instead of having CH2, CH2 with a double bond in between, we're now going to have CH3, CH3, because we've got hydrogens attached to those two spare slots that we've kind of talked about. Okay, so there's an equation for the reaction. In other words, C2H4 plus H2 makes C2H6. Simple as that. And this is called an addition reaction. Whereas before we had substitution reactions where we were swapping one atom for another, now we don't have to swap because we've got this spare space. These molecules are unsaturated, remember? So here's an equation for hydrogenation. All right, and we can do this hopefully for any alkene just by thinking about, right, the double bond's going to open up and we're going to put hydrogens into it. And things aren't much more complicated when we've got halogens. We just have to remember really what halogens are. So they're things like chlorine and bromine, okay, and iodine and fluorine. And this is an important chemical test because if you remember, in fact, let's get rid of the chlorine and put bromine in. If you remember from the alkanes film, this won't happen with alkanes unless you provide bright UV light. With alkenes it happens straight away and you don't need bright light for it at all because this is such a reactive molecule. Okay, So in this case we're going to make CH2 there but with a Br attached, CH2 here but with a Br attached, so we've now made dibromoethane but it doesn't matter what it's called for now. Okay, So our bromine has attached to it. This is orange bromine but this is colourless. and So this is a really important chemical test because if you've got an alkene and you add bromine water to it, then the bromine water will lose its colour with an alkene. It won't do that with an alkane because remember they're quite unreactive and they need UV light to make this happen. Okay, So writing an equation would be just C2H4 plus Br2 makes C2H4 Br2. What could be easier than that? Okay. Right, moving on to hydrogen halides. Now, I've deliberately drawn an unsymmetrical alkene here because what we're going to be doing is adding any hydrogen halide, so that could be HBr, HCl, HI, but I'm going to call it HX so that I'm not specifying what the X is. Okay, it could be anything. But what's going to happen here? Well, these two atoms here are going to get the H and the X. And you might wonder which one gets which. Don't worry about it. Okay, you can draw it either way round. So I could either write CH3, because this one got the H, and then that would be CHX and CH3 on the end there. Okay, or I could put the H and the X the other way round. I'd get the marks either way. Okay, as for writing an equation, well, let's say this had been HBr. Okay, then that's really quite simple again. That would be CH2, CH. CH3 or, or just simply C3H6, so let's cross that one out and keep it simple, plus HBr makes C3H7 now Br. 
Okay, so again, an addition reaction, just opening up the double bond and putting in the new atoms. And finally, reactions with water. Well, if you think you know how HX works, then water shouldn't be too difficult because you've just got HOH, so your X is OH, right? So you're just going to be making that into CH3, CH2, OH. And if you're writing an equation for that, then that would be C2H4 plus H2O makes C2H5OH. Or you could just write that as C2H6O, whatever you like. Okay. Why is this an important co commercial process? Because you've made ethanol. Okay. So you've taken an alkene and added water to it, and you've made an alcohol, which is a really useful thing because these things are used as biofuels. Okay. So now that we're trying to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, we can make alcohol by hydrating alkenes except you probably wouldn't want to do it this way because your alkene probably came from crude oil in the first place okay but we can make alkene uh, alcohol from alkene fuel, fuel, uh, fuel stocks feed stocks is what i meant to say anyway um hopefully now you can see how alkenes react and you could say to yourself right if I do a bit of practice of this stuff, I'll be able to write equations for the reactions with those four things. If you've got any questions or comments, the sooner you come and see me, the better. Or please post a comment on YouTube.